What is up my dudes? Welcome back to part 2 of how to make your own GUI. If you haven't seen part 1 and you have never made a GUI in Bucket, I highly recommend you go and watch that video because if you don't, you are going to be pretty lost with what we're doing. So let's get into what we're doing today. So last time we talked about the basics of GUI, really the foundation for what we're going to be doing today. So uh, if you do have that code from last time, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just delete it. You can go ahead and do that too because that code is useless to us because we are going to be making a better way of handling our inventories. Now if you're creating a single GUI page with maybe one or two buttons, you don't have to go and create an entire method for creating GUIs, right? You can just go ahead and hard code that one in right there. So me, I like keeping my code organized and this is the best way to do it in my opinion. There are probably many ways you could do this. You could use an interface, you can use an abstract class, you could use a normal class if you really wanted to. Um, but I'm going to be doing it this certain way which I will show you right now. Alright, so first thing we need to do here is find out how we're going to structure this. I just made another folder right here, or a package rather, inside of my package with the identical name. Probably isn't the best way to name something, but for just for demonstration purposes, this is what I'm going to do here. So inside of this package right here, I'm going to go ahead and create a new class. Just kidding, we are going to be making an interface. This interface, actually no, I actually want to do a class this time. Well, when I was preparing for this episode, I did it as an interface, but I'm thinking an abstract class is the way to go. Let's see how this pans out. So this interface is going to be our GUI. So I'm going to go ahead and just name it GUI. And as I said, this is going to be an abstract class. You want to go ahead and put that right up there. The first thing we are going to do inside of this class is identify a few properties. If you don't know what a property is, essentially it is a class level variable. So it will be accessible in all of the methods inside of this class. The first thing we're going to have in this class is a string, which is going to be an identifier. This identifier is going to be for our use only, and it's not going to be anything the front end user can see, so it can theoretically be whatever you want. So I'm going to go ahead and create a property to represent this value, and also a method for getting this value. Alright, then we're going to do the same exact thing, except we're going to store an integer. And this integer is going to be the size of our inventory. So I'm going to go ahead and create a property for that, as well as a method for getting this value. All right, the next thing we are going to want to add is a title for our inventory. So this title is going to be what's going to show up top of the inventory. All right, this entire time I have been calling these properties up here. That is actually incorrect. If we were to make these public, then this would, this would indeed be a property of the class. It is accessible through uh, by other classes, so this would be a property. But I'm going to go ahead and make this private, so you actually have to access this value through these methods we are making. So technically, this is not a property, it is a class level variable. This next one we are going to add is pretty important. We are going to have an instance of the inventory saved inside of this class. For right now, there are only two more methods we need to add inside of this class. It is going to be our method for whenever the inventory opens, and our method for whenever the inventory closes. Now with both of those done, we can go ahead and create a constructor for our class. So I'm going to go ahead and do just that, I'm going to create a constructor here, and the things we want to pass into this constructor are going to be all of the variables that we created just a second ago except for possibly the inventory, but if we need to remove that, then we will remove that. Now this GUI class is done. For now, we will be coming back and adding one more thing to this in just a moment. But before we do that, we need to talk about the second type of interface that we are going to be using to structure our GUI. So let's talk about the second thing we are going to be adding now. This is going to be an entry. What an entry is, is it represents an item inside of our GUI. And this item has advanced properties attached to it, such as the ability to update it, such as the ability to perform an action whenever it is clicked. Things like that that you would want to do with a GUI. So let's go ahead and create this right now. We're going to name this class entry. 
and this is going to be an abstract class just like that last one we made and inside of this class we are going to be creating a few variables and methods as well so we could store an item stack inside of this class and call it a day but if you want to do some more advanced stuff, it is a good idea to have all the raw data for that inside of this class. What I mean by that is things like the material, the name, the lore, quantity, slot, things like that. If you want to use persistent data, you can go ahead and add that. If you want to save specific item meta, you can add that. Whatever you feel like doing, you can do that inside of this class. So let's go ahead and make a few of those things that I just mentioned. I'm going to go ahead and start by creating a material. This material is going to be whatever our item is. So if it's a diamond, it's going to be a diamond. If it is a dirt block, it will be a dirt block. And we are going to be creating get methods for all of these variables. So you can go ahead and do that as I do it. The first variable we're going to be adding, as I just said, is the material. I typically name my material type because whenever you get the type of an item, you use the method get type. So it just makes sense in my head. If you want to change this to material, feel free. I might actually go ahead and do that and then just make my method get type. The next variable we're going to be adding here is the name of our item. This is going to be the display name that is shown to the user. My apologies if you hear any background noise, but let's go ahead and continue where we were just at. So, the next thing we want to do is add a lore because it is pretty common that you will have a lore on your item. So I'm going to go ahead and create a variable that is going to hold that. Next thing we're going to add is the quantity of the item. So however many of the item are inside of the single item stack. Next we are going to have the slot that the item is in inside of the inventory. Now we need two final methods inside of this class right here. The first thing is going to be a method for whenever the item gets clicked. And this method is going to be abstract. You do not need to put anything inside of it right now. The next method we're going to add is optional just like everything we are doing here. All of this stuff is optional. If you see a value you don't want, you don't have to add it. That's the great part about this. So we're going to be adding a method for updating the item. So let's say you want to have an item update every X amount of ticks, you can go ahead and do that right here. And this will run every X amount of ticks. We will get more into what this does later. But for right now, let's hop back on over. That's a lie. We need to add the constructor for this class. So let's go ahead and create variables or setters for all of these so whenever we create our entry we'll be able to set all these values all right now let's head back on over to our GUI class and we will add that final thing that we need and that final thing is going to be a list of the entries that are inside of this GUI so I'm gonna go ahead and create that and I'm also going to create a getter to get this list all right now with that done we can go ahead and get on to the bread and butter of what we are doing here. So I'm gonna go ahead and format these the way I like them and then I'm just gonna close out of them for right now. We do not need them. And I'm gonna also reset this main class here. All right, so the next thing we are going to be doing is actually not inside of our main class. We are going to be creating a, another class for this. I'm not going to put this inside of my GUI package rather I'm going to put it inside of the same directory as my main class. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new class here. In this class I'm going to name GUI Manager. So let's talk about what's going to be in this class here. There's going to be an entry builder. So it's going to build all of our entries into items that we can use inside of our GUI. There's also going to be a method for taking those entries and putting them inside of the correct slots in the inventory. And then finally, there will be a method for sending that inventory and opening it to the player. I find that a good place to start is the first step inside of your problem. So the first problem we have here is how do you open the inventory? So let's go ahead and create a method for opening the inventory. And then whenever you open an inventory, you need the player that it's going to and also the inventory you want to open. So let's go ahead and pass those into this method. How do we open the inventory for the player if we don't have the inventory yet? 
this is where our next problem comes in. Normally I would do something like player dot open inventory and then pass in my inventory. But we don't have that inventory yet. So how do we get this inventory? Well, we need to create a method for making this inventory. So now that we have figured out what the next step is, we can go ahead and plan for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a method for creating an inventory, and this is going to be a private method because it only needs to be accessed by this method right here, which is inside of the same class. And then inside of this method, you're going to pass in the GUI which you want to build. So if you remember from the last episode, which you should because I highly recommend you, lo you watch it so you understand what I'm talking about here. So we're going to be creating an inventory just like we did last time. If you remember, just like this, we're going to assign it to a variable and then we are going to use the method bucket.createInventory. And as you can probably remember, the first thing that goes here 99% of the time is null and then the size of the inventory, which we can get from our GUI. And then for the name, what we actually want to do is I'm gonna create another variable just to keep this all nice and organized. You could just do this right here in the method if you felt like you wanted to. So I'm gonna be creating a variable for the title and remember, the title we want to have color codes support for it. So we need to translate those color codes into colors. All right, and just like that, we now have formatted our title properly and we can pass it into this method. All right, so next we want to place all of our entries that are inside of our GUI inside of the inventory. So how do we do this? We need to loop through all of the entries inside of this inventory. So we're going to be creating a for loop for this. Next thing we want to do is iterate over our list of entries. It is good practice to break up your code into different methods that do different things. So we're going to be creating a method for building our entries. Just like the setup inventory method, this method is going to be a private one. All right, and this is going to look very familiar if you watched the last episode. We're going to create an item stack the same exact way. And then for the material, we can go ahead and get that from our entry. And then we can also set the quantity right here as well. So if you remember, we have a display name and a lore that need to go onto our item. So we need to get our item meta, translate both of those to color, and then set the values. Let's go ahead and talk about how we're going to do that. So the first thing we're going to do, obviously, is get the item meta. All right, and the next simple thing to do here is set our display name. All right, and then where things start to get a little more complicated is where you translate the lore. We need to iterate over our list, right? But we're also modifying our list at the same time. So we can't iterate over it the same way we did up here. We have to use a different iterator. So what we're going to do is create an integer loop. And then what we want to do is modify this lore. We're not actually going to be modifying the value that is inside of our entry because we want to save that value there so we can rebuild the entry if we need to. What we're going to do is create a separate list. So I guess if you really wanted to, you could iterate over the list like this. So let's go ahead and create that list that is going to be our lore. All right, and then for every single string that is inside of this list that we are creating, we are going to translate the colors and then add it to this new list we just created. I'm actually going to iterate over the list like we did up here. This is slightly more efficient whenever you're using Java, but uh, that doesn't really matter, let's be honest. Who really cares? <laughs> just for simplicity, so I have to go make a variable to represent the current line, I'm gonna go ahead and just do it this way. Because in my opinion, it looks cleaner and who really cares about those small optimizations? All right, then we can go ahead and set the lore of our item to this list we just created. And then we can go ahead and set the item meta back to our item. And then we can go ahead and return this item because it is fully built. 
and just like that we have built our entry now let's go back on up here to where we were just before this for loop is going to be pretty simple now that we have created that separate method we want to access our inventory because we're going to be sending an item inside of this inventory using this set item method and then the first value that goes here is going to be the slot which the inventory is in which we can get from our entry and then as well as the item that is going to be inside of the slot we can go ahead and use this method to get that item and just like that our for loop is finished and we are almost done with this method the next thing we want to do is set the value of this inventory inside of our GUI because remember we created that variable that's going to hold our built GUI so the inventory inside of the GUI so let's go ahead and set the and yes we are going to need to modify our GUI class very slightly here so uh, right here on our constructor where we have our inventory passed in you want to get rid of that and then we are going to be creating a method to get and set this value we already have the get so now we just need the setter and there we go we now have a setter and I'm going to put this right under our getter because that is how I like to structure my code now we can go ahead and use that set inventory method we just created to set the inventory of our GUI and then we can go ahead and return our GUI our inventory rather now if you watched last episode you should know that if I were to type in this or this it's the exact same because every single inventory is tied to one instance and that instance of the inventory is not clonable the same instance is able to be accessed from multiple spots in your code all right and then finally we can return to this method right here which we created first now we can go ahead and use this player variable to open an inventory which we can get from setting it up so we're going to set up our inventory and the inventory we're going to be setting up is this GUI if you are inexperienced with making inventories then you may just ask me well why don't you just build the GUI once and then send that instance out to every player while that is a good idea great critical thinking that would not really be the best solution in this scenario because if you were to do that then every single player would get the same exact inventory what this would mean is that if let's say you had a, an inventory where the player could drop items into it or take items out right so if one player puts items in another player could just steal those items right out of the inventory so you want to make sure that every single player is opening their own unique inventory and whenever you build the inventory every single time this way you are ensuring that so every single time a player opens this inventory this code will run and lucky for you computers nowadays are super super fast so this will get done basically instantaneously all right enough of that nerd talk let's go ahead and uh, do a little more here actually for right now this is all this method is going to contain in the future we will add more but for right now I'm going to call this good and by in the future I mean very shortly here so now that we have all of this stuff set up we can go ahead and get on to the next step which is going to be how are we going to listen for whenever a player clicks on a specific entry in a specific inventory well this is where this method really shines now normally as I explained last episode detecting which item is clicked inside of which inventory can be a nightmare if you don't have a sort of system set up so let's go ahead and create a class for our listeners here I'm gonna go ahead and name this GUI listeners if I could spell that would be great all right and uh this is not a listener tutorial so i'm gonna go ahead and just set up the basics here you should already know this hopefully uh if not that is okay i suppose but i recommend you learning this before watching this great time to say it i know when you're already halfway done so this class and this class go hand in hand every single time a gui is opened we're going to create a new instance of this class okay well 
yeah, yeah, we're creating a new instance of this class. And then we're going to register that to the server, and then every single time the GUI is closed, we're going to unregister that event. So whenever an inventory is opened, it will listen for the GUI. Whenever it is closed, it will stop listening for the GUI. I personally think this is an amazing method of doing this. So since every single time a GUI is opened, we're going to be creating a new instance of this class. We actually want to pass that GUI into this class in the constructor because we are going to be using it to detect for when our items are clicked. And then the second thing we are going to put in here is an instance of our GUI manager. And we will get into why we need this very shortly. Alright, so let's go ahead and create our on click listener, our on open listener, and our on close listener. Let's talk about how we're going to be detecting when our GUI is clicked. If you remember last time, we used the title, but this way is even better you don't need to set a title. So what we're going to be doing here is checking to see if our GUI that is held inside of this variable is equal to the inventory that is clicked. So to get the inventory from the event, we get the clicked inventory and then we check if it equals using the equals method, the GUI's inventory. And if this is true, then we know that we're inside of the GUI. I'm going to go ahead and cancel the event right here. You could cancel it on the entry spot whenever you check to see if they clicked an entry so they can put in items or take the item out that they put in if you want to have an interactive inventory like that. Me, I am not going to be doing that in this scenario. So I'm going to go ahead and just cancel the event right here. Now, because our entry does not hold an instance of our item, we're going to be comparing the slots. The slot that the player clicked on and the slot that our entry is inside of. So I'm going to go ahead and create a variable that's going to represent the slot that the player has clicked. Then we're going to iterate over all of our entries and then check to see if the slot from that entry is equal to the slot that the player has clicked on. And then inside of this if statement right here, you want to run the onClick event for our entry. And then we want to pass in the event right here, and then we can go ahead and break from our loop. Now the onOpen and onClose events are basically the exact same way of detecting it. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy this right here and change it slightly. All right, and now we have both those methods set up. So on open, we want to go ahead and run the on open method for our inventory, and then on close, we want to do the same exact thing. All right, we are not done yet though. There's actually one more thing we need to do, and that is unregister all of our events when the inventory is closed, and we will do that right here inside of our on close event. So on our on close event, we want to unregister this listener, this listener, and this listener. So how do you unregister a listener? It's actually pretty simple. The first thing you want to do is reference the event that you are going to cancel. So we have the inventory close event, inventory open event, and inventory click event. So we're going to be doing that once for each of them. So the first one I'm going to do here is the inventory close event and I am going to use the method get handler list and then you can use the method unregister and then you want to pass in the instance of either your plugin if you're cance canceling all the instances or all the listeners from a specific plugin which we are not doing or you can pass in the class or the instance of the class that contains the listener luckily for us this is very easy because we're doing it in that class so we can just type in this boom very simple and we're going to do that for the other two events and just like that we are finished with this class so now we need to register those events we just made so let's go ahead and do that right now 
but in order to do that we actually need an instance of our plugin so I'm gonna go ahead and create a constructor right here to get that all right now we can go ahead and register our listener if you are interested in seeing how this would be implemented into one of your plugins you can go ahead and check out the next episode inside of this video series anyways if this helped you out make sure you drop a like this really did take me quite a lot of time I am currently an hour and a half into recording almost uh, so a like would be greatly appreciated uh, anyways if you ran into any issues feel free to head on over to my discord there are a bunch of like-minded individuals over there who would be more than happy to help you out the link to join is in the description and that is all for today nice. i will see the you next nuts, time goodbye